So let's discuss satellites and satellite motion. So let's suppose we have the following satellite found on the surface of the Earth. And let's suppose we somehow want to force our satellite into the following circular orbit around the Earth. How exactly would we accomplish that? Well, in order to set our satellite into orbit around the Earth, the velocity of that satellite must be exactly right. If the velocity is too low, gravity will pull the satellite back to the ground. Our satellite will fall back to the ground. Now, on the other hand, if the velocity is too high, our object, the satellite, will simply escape into space, never to return again. So, the tangential velocity of the satellite and the gravitational pull of the Earth keeps the satellite in orbit and the velocity has to be exactly right. If it's too high, it will escape. If it's too low, it will fall back to the ground. So notice that our velocity vector always points, is always tangent to our orbit and the net force acting on our object, the satellite, always points toward the center of the Earth and these vectors are exactly perpendicular to one another. Now, what exactly is the net force acting on the object? So, whatever the net force acting on the object, that equals mass times our centripetal acceleration because in order for the satellite to orbit the Earth, it has to have a radial acceleration. So, what exactly is the force acting on the satellite? Well, it's the gravitational force due to the Earth, due to the Earth's mass. And it's given by the following formula. So the gravitational constant G multiplied by the mass of our object, the satellite multiplied by the mass of the Earth, divided by the distance between the center of mass squared. And this equals to m times, well this can be rewritten as velocity of the object, so the a tangential velocity squared divided by the distance r. So notice if we rearrange this equation and we solve for v, we get the following result. Our tangential velocity of the object is equal to the square root of the gravitational constant g multiplied by the mass of the earth divided by the distance r. So this gives us the velocity required to keep the satellite in orbit around the Earth, given the fact that we know what the height, what the distance is between our rocket, our satellite, and the center of the Earth. Because we know what G is, it's a constant. We know what M is, it's also a constant. So if we know our distance between our satellite and the center of the Earth, we can find what the velocity requirement is to keep our satellite in motion, in orbit around the Earth. Now, what exactly is, is a geosynchronous satellite? What is its definition? Well, a geosynchronous satellite is a satellite that stays above the same exact point on the Earth. So that means as the Earth rotates, our satellite rotates at the same exact point rotational frequency. So, this is only possible if the satellite is exactly above the equator of the Earth. So, if we have the Earth and the Earth is rotating with some frequency, then if our satellite is found on the equator, above the equator, and if it's rotating at the same exact frequency, then that means our satellite is known as a geosynchronous satellite. So let's ask the following two questions. What is the height requirement and what is the velocity of a geosynchronous satellite? Well, let's begin by finding what the height requirement is. So we just said that a geosynchronous satellite is a satellite that has the same exact frequency as the Earth. So the frequency of the Earth is equal to the frequency of the satellite, and because the frequency of Earth is 1 revolutions per 24 hours, which is the same thing as saying 1 revolution per 86,400 seconds, then the frequency of the satellite is exactly this. Now, we can use this equation, so this is exactly what we have here. This is equal to this. So what is the relationship between velocity and frequency? 
Well, velocity is equal to the circumference of our circle of our orbit multiplied by its frequency. So we can plug that into this V and we get the following equation. So the circumference, 2 pi r, multiplied by the frequency and you square the whole term because velocity is squared. So let's basically rearrange these equations and solve for our r. So if we rearrange our equations, we get that r is equal to this g constant multiplied by the mass of the earth divided by 4 pi squared times frequency squared. And then we raise the whole thing to the power of 1 third, 1 over 3. So that means if we plug in all our knowns, we find that the distance from the center of the earth to our satellite is 4.23 times 10 to the 7 meters. But this is not the height requirement. The height is from the surface of the earth to our satellite. So that means we take this value and we subtract our radius of the earth. 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. And we get a value, a height of uh, 3.59 times 10 to the 7 meters. So in order for our satellite to be a geosynchronous satellite, it has to be above the equator of the Earth in this height. So 3.59 times 10 to the 7 meters. What about the velocity? Well, we can use this formula to solve for the velocity. So velocity, or the tangential velocity of the object, the satellite, is equal to this formula. We plug in our values and we get... 3,070 meters per second. So, in order for our satellite to be a geosynchronous satellite, in order for it to rotate at the same exact frequency with the Earth above the equator, it must have this height and this velocity.